If you want to detect trends amongst a certain group, you begin by identifying a population. In order to study that population, you often take a sample, which is random and representative of the entire population. Then you gather information and you can organize that information either into a frequency distribution or a, frequent, a grouped frequency distribution as we have seen in the previous videos. Then the interpretation of that data begins. A great way to begin understanding the trends in the data is to visualize that data. And we can do that with a histogram or a frequency polygon. Now the word histogram is a fancy word for a bar graph with bars that touch. This can be used to easily illustrate a frequency distribution and detect trends. Similarly, a frequency polygon is a line graph that represents the frequency distribution. So it's a line graph that we're going to see. We're going to make it a closed region and turn it into a polygon. So to understand these two, we're going to use the frequency distribution that we created in example three to make both a histogram, that is a bar graph with bars that touch, and a frequency polygon there on the second graph. So scroll back for a minute to example three that we completed on page one. We had a list of grades and we took the frequency for each of those grades. So keep this in your sights as we construct both our histogram and our frequency polygon. Now from the data there were three A's. So what we're going to do is draw a bar that spans letter A and it reaches up to a height of three. So I'm going to approximate the height there and make it about three. Now on that graph, on our, I mean on our frequency distribution, the B's had a frequency of five. So notice I'm writing the frequency at the top of the bar, just makes it easier to read. Also observe that the bars are centered over the data point and the bars touch. Now from the results, there were eight C's. So I'm gonna make that, might be a little too tall. Let's put it about right there. To be clear, I'm going to put the frequency at the top. And then we had two Ds and we had one F. I'll put the frequency there. So this is an example of a histogram. Now we can do a frequency polygon for the same data. The way we do this, remember we had three A's, I'm just going to put a point on the graph at approximately three over the data point A. We, we have five B's, we have eight C's, two D's, and one F. So to turn this into a frequency polygon, I'm simply going to connect the dots. That's a line graph. To make it a frequency polygon, we drop verticals down here to the horizontal axis and complete the polygon. So sometimes you'll see this is a shaded region and that's what we call a frequency polygon. Now, because our scale here is not exact, it does help to list your frequencies along with each of those data points. Now that we can visualize the data, we can begin to get a better understanding of the grades in that particular class. One thing I want you to notice is the shape of these distributions. And this is particularly evident on both of these graphs, but they have a shape where the hump is sort of in the middle. These are resembling what we call a bell curve. Now a bell curve is something that we'll study in the last section here, section 12.4, but it shows that most of the students are tending towards the center. Most of the students make the C's, fewer students make the D's and F, and fewer students make the A's and B's. So it's shaped like a bell, so this might be approaching a bell curve or a normal distribution. But by observing the shape of both the histogram and the frequency polygon, I begin to at least be able to visualize the results obtained from that data. And again, both of these are very simple to construct.